Hi, we're here with the founder of Wikipedia, Jimmy Wells, who came to Guatemala to give a conference for, C, uh, for Creative Commons Guatemala, who's starting. And we have the, a moment to, to speak with him and ask him a little bit about his projects and what, what the future is going to be for them. Uh, Jimmy, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. And uh, I want to ask you a little bit how everything started, technologically speaking, with Wikipedia. When things become huge, when you were just running this project and people started to use it, how was the process? Yeah, well, so, uh, you know, the, the technology, um, we've always been very, very strongly committed to open source. So we've always had open source software, and we've always used all open source everything. Um, when we first started, we actually used a, a, a Perl-based wiki, uh, UseMod. Uh, and uh, it was really great, actually. I, I don't want to criticize it, because it was what it was designed for was to be really easy to install. And it was easy to install. I got it up and running in 10 minutes, you know. Um, but it was very primitive in its own way. So pretty early on, we realized that we really needed to change things. We really needed to have um, database, you know, proper database, uh, proper search, and so on and so forth. So, but we had no money because we were just a small community effort, a nonprofit. And um, so what we did, we we had someone who uh, rewrote the software uh, to be PHP and MySQL based. Um, and for a while, we ran on one server, and then we went to two and three, and. Um, it was at that time when we were running on three servers when um, we had on, on Christmas Day um, a crash. Uh, two of the three machines crashed, and so we were back to running on one machine. And wow, that was tough because we had enough traffic then that one machine running both the database and the front end stuff all on one machine, it just was not, um, it wasn't workable. So what we did, um, we did our first fundraiser. We raised about $20,000, I think. Um, we went out and bought eight servers, which I went and installed myself in the racks, because this is the old days, and I was the only one around to do things. Um, and we started working on a more scalable solution. Um, pretty quickly, uh, we moved to um, this traditional sort of web farm kind of idea with uh, front end um, caching servers. Um, then behind that, the, the web servers, which actually compute the pages um, as necessary, and then the database back end, and then all the you know auxiliary servers. Um, and actually, you know, it's interesting because the, the scaling, obviously things have been rewritten and redesigned many times over by now, but the basic architecture, that basic architecture is, is what we've always had since, since that time when once we got to eight servers, um, simply because it works. Um, you know, it's a good architecture. And it's also scalable in the sense that um, to add capacity, for the most part, you just add more servers, you know. Of course, at various times along the way, we've had certain bottlenecks that we had to deal with. So um, I remember at one point in time, uh, uh, the developers, and remember, we at this time, we had all volunteer developers. And uh, the developers um, just happened to mention to me, um, we were in Berlin, and uh, they mentioned to me that, uh, well, gee, on, our, on a back-end database server, um, we have about six weeks left of disk space. And uh, furthermore, we actually have no idea what we're going to do after that. Uh, because uh, it can't, it was too big to fit on one machine unless we bought really expensive hardware at the time and, and things like this. And they're like, and I said, oh, <laughs> what are we going to do, right? Uh, but they, you know, they came through. They, I remember at the time what they did at that time was they found a way to compress the old versions and saved a ton of disk space that way. And, um, but so we've had lots of little bumps along the way. But, um, you know, overall, I think that this kind of thing works. And for us, one of the things that's been a huge advantage is the open source nature of the software. So that when we've had a problem, lots of people were able to chip in and, and ideas and help out. And lots of people, even if they're not involved in the project, they know the solutions. They, the, this, this world is a very well-developed world now with lots and lots of intelligence out there. Uh, I was reading that you're going to have to lay off people in Wikia for, for the project currently because of the world situation, because of the, what's going to happen in the following years. How do you see what's going to happen, and how do you think? Are you think that more companies are going to start cutting people? How do you see the, the situation? Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I think for us, what um, what we're looking at is, uh, you know, the, first of all, the news reports were some of them wildly inaccurate. I read that we laid off 30% of our staff. So, well, that's surprising. <laughs> I had to make sure, you know, we emailed internally. No, it's not true. Everybody, calm down, right? We let a few people go. We're doing some restructuring. Um, but it's interesting because when I look at the internet industry right now, um, what I'm seeing across the board is panic. 
lots of panic. And I think it's because our industry um, went through the whole dot-com crash, which was just unbelievable, right? Uh, people, you know, companies went uh, from situations where they were profitable or nearly profitable to suddenly being, um, you know, their revenue was one-tenth what it was before. And so there's a lot of fear about that kind of thing. Uh, as for me, I'm not that worried about it. I don't think we're in a second you know, dot-com crash. Um, in fact, what I've seen is there's tons of companies like ours who have a very small burn rate, a very controlled burn. We've been really looking for the long run. Um, what happened in the past was um, people were spending money without worrying about how they could ever break even. Um, because they could just raise more money. There was sort of this belief, well, you can always just go raise more money if you need it. And we've not had that feeling, mostly because we didn't want to raise more money. We really, you know, because every time you raise money, you have to give up part of the company and so forth. Um, and so there's a lot of companies like that. And there's a lot of uh, sort of uh, the, the insanity of the dot-com boom when people were having the Rolling Stones for their launch parties and stupid things like that. That hasn't happened again, right? And most of the companies out there, not all of them, but most of them have at least an idea of a business model and, and, a, and a path that looks like it might or might, you know, it's always speculative, new companies, right? But um, a lot of them look like they're kind of okay as services that could generate a profit. And so we're going to see some adjustment, obviously, and we're going to see probably more adjustment than we need right now. We're going to see some panicking. Uh, but um, in the long haul, I don't, I don't think it's going to, you know, be, be anything like that. I mean, the thing, the other thing to remember, too, is that even in a, a pretty serious recession, you know, you're only talking about the economy shrinking 3%, 5%, right? And of course, that can affect some things more than others. Um, uh, but, well, you know, the economy goes up, the economy goes down. Everybody better be ready for it, you know? And the final question, how many times Jimmy Wells goes into Wikipedia to edit some articles? <laughs> so I'm on Wikipedia every day, and I probably edit something um, you know, not necessarily every day, but, but often. Um, but I mostly don't edit articles. Uh, I mostly edit, uh, I'm in discussion spaces and, and just talking to people and things like that. Um, one of the reasons is actually um, the, the last time I, I really created a new article, it was, uh, I created an article for a very interesting um, restaurant. It's a uh, restaurant in called Mazzoli's in South Africa. And what's interesting about it is it's a successful restaurant in one of the black townships that was one of the heart of the, the, the area that, that had a lot of violence and troubles uh, under apartheid. And it's a restaurant that's popular with both black and white South Africans. So it's culturally quite interesting and very well-known local landmark. So I created an article, but then there was a discussion about whether it should be deleted, which was kind of funny, but whatever. But then the media picked up on the story. And then there was a, a, a news story about this. And I just said, oh, that's. That's pathetic. I mean, I'm just trying to be a Wikipedian here, right? So I kind of refrain from, from getting involved too much in editing just because, um, well, I don't want to accidentally cause any trouble. Well, thank you very much for your time, and thank you very much for the interview. Yeah, thank you.